Hello everyone, welcome to Politics of China, today's chat is, Accelerate Chip Development, China invests 1 billion to expand 12-inch wafer production capacity, recently, in order to be able to accelerate chip production capacity, China Semiconductor Manufacturing International invested over $7.5 billion in a project for a 12-inch wafer production line that started construction in Xiching, Tianjin. SMIC co-CEO Zhao Haiyang told local authorities that the plant will help consolidate Tianjin's position in the IC industry and play a role in the rapid development of Beijing, Tianjin and Hebei. When completed, the fab will be able to produce 100,000 12-inch wafers per month, producing large-sized chips at 28 nanometers for telecommunications equipment, automotive manufacturing and consumer electronics. SMIC currently operates three 8-inch wafer fabs and three 12-inch wafer fabs in Shanghai, Beijing, Tianjin and Shenzhen. Meanwhile, 12-inch fabs in Shanghai, Beijing and Shenzhen are under construction. On January 4, 2022, SMIC's 12-inch foundry production line project at the Lingang base announced the official start of construction. SMIC and Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone Lingang New Area Management Committee jointly established a joint venture company in Lingang Free Trade Zone with a planned construction capacity of 100,000 wafers slash month and a planned investment of 8.87 billion US dollars, with a registered capital of 5.5 billion US dollars for the joint venture company of which SMIC Holdings, National Grand Fund II and Shanghai Haidlin Micro IC Company, Limited each agreed to contribute 3.655 billion US dollars, 922 million US dollars and 923 million US dollars, accounting for 66.45%, 16.77% and 16.78% of the registered capital of the Lingang JV, respectively. The production line is focused on providing IC foundry and technology services at 28 nanometers and above technology nodes. In March 2021, SMIC will build a 12-inch wafer fab in Shenzhen, with SMIC Manufacturing Company, Limited responsible for the development and operation of the project. The project has an estimated investment of 2.35 billion US dollars and is planned to achieve 40,000 wafers slash month 12 inch wafer capacity with a focus on the production of 28 nanometers and above ICs and the provision of technology services, with production expected to commence in 2022. On July 31, 2020, SMIC and the Beijing Development District Administrative Committee jointly entered into and signed a cooperation framework agreement to establish a joint venture company to build a new 12-inch wafer fab focusing on the production of 28 nanometers and above IC projects. The project is to be built in two phases, with the first phase planned to be completed in 2024 with a planned investment of 7.6 billion US dollars and an ultimate 12-inch wafer capacity of approximately 100,000 wafers per month in the first phase. The second phase of the project will be launched in due course according to customer and market demand. SMIC has expanded its chip production capacity four times in a row, and the additional monthly output of these capacities will be as high as 340,000 wafers when they come online. Previously, SMIC also made a one-time purchase of $1.1 billion worth of lithography equipment from ASML, which ASML said was mostly DUV lithography, with a quantity of about 30 units. SMIC purchased a large number of DUV lithography and other equipment to prepare for the expansion of 28 nanometers, 14 nanometers and other chips. TSMC's president Wei Zhaijia once said that about 80% of chips in automotive semiconductors are made by mature processes above 28 nanometers, and only 20% are made by advanced processes below 14 nanometers, so it seems that SMIC's 12-inch market is about to explode. Comparing the global foundry revenue from the fourth quarter of 2021 to the second quarter of 2022, it can be seen that the gap between SMIC and Gokor is initially narrowing. SMIC's growth rate surpassed Gokor significantly in the first quarter of this year, when their growth rates were 16.6% and 5% respectively, driving SMIC's market share to grow significantly, while Gokor's market share fell through 6 percentage points for the first time, highlighting the strong growth momentum of Chinese chip companies. 
in the second quarter of this year, the growth rates of GOCOR and SMIC were 2.7% and 3.3%, respectively. SMIC's growth rate again exceeded GOCOR's, while its market share was 5.9% and 5.6%, respectively, and the gap has been shortened to 0.3 percentage points. Nowadays, silicon wafers are developing in the direction of large size. Since 2011, the market share of 8-inch wafers has been stable between 25% to 27%, and in 2018, benefiting from the strong demand for automotive electronics, industrial electronics, IoT, and other applications, as well as power devices, sensors, and other manufacturers to shift part of their production capacity from 6-inch to 8-inch, driving 8-inch wafers to maintain growth, with a 6.25% year-on-year increase in shipping area. At the same time, there are more and more mature process chips using 12-inch wafer manufacturing, many of the original reliance on 8-inch wafers of mature process chips are migrating to 12-inch, coupled with the continued growth in demand for advanced process chips, making the global 12-inch wafer capacity utilization is at a high level. Sumco, the world's leading silicon wafer company, predicts that in 2023, 12-inch wafer capacity utilization will exceed 100%. 2023, after the use of 12-inch silicon wafer manufacturing logic, storage chip demand is expected to further expand. In the global electronics market downturn, cost control has been their top priority, and mature technology can reduce costs, it is no wonder that TSMC will focus on mature technology. In terms of cost, China's chip production has the absolute upper hand. China's chip production has developed to 14 nanometers, which is sufficient to meet 70% of the Chinese chip market, in fact, most of China's chips are above 28 nanometers technology, BYD's IGBT chip is 90 nanometers, while China's third largest chip maker is 65 nanometers. Since 2019, the global supply chain began to feel the change in chip supply, and by 2020 after the United States took further measures against Huawei, many companies began to really worry about the supply of chips, so they have hoarded chips, and thus the chip industry quickly appeared to supply shortages. Chip industry shortage, the natural price will rise, speculative capital C profitable, also began to join the speculation and hoard chips, further exacerbating the problem of supply tension in the chip industry, resulting in the global chip prices soared, and even some chip prices skyrocketed a hundred times. Due to the tight supply of chips, larger enterprises can get priority supply, in the automotive industry, Europe, the United States, Japan and South Korea's auto companies are larger, they naturally get priority supply, in the cell phone industry Apple Lucrative, also get priority care, Samsung has the strongest industrial chain also do not need to worry about the chip problem. In this chip scramble, Chinese companies should suffer a lot, when China's auto company said that due to the lack of chip supply, resulting in cars cannot reach the expected capacity, which allows Chinese auto companies lost the market for nothing. Chinese cell phone companies are also scrambling for chips, some cell phone companies said at the time to grab the chip is equivalent to get the market. In this artificially caused chip shortage, the chip industry into a highly prosperous phase, chip companies make a lot of money, especially the US chip, which holds nearly half of the global chip market share is making a handsome profit, the US chip companies Texas Instruments, Broadcom, etc. have made considerable profit growth in 2021, however, this demand is ultimately false and unsustainable, this bubble burst since this year up. In fact, the chip supply shortage in the past two years is not due to increased demand, 2020 and 2021 global cell phone shipments are actually declining, TV and car sales are lower than in 2019, 2021 PC had achieved growth but still lower than the historical peak, to this year it all becomes more and more obvious. First of all, cell phone shipments fell sharply, especially the global 5G cell phone 80% of sales in the Chinese market, since February this year, China's 5G cell phone sales fell continuously, at this time, 
RF chips are the first to be affected, so 5G cell phones need RF chips is two to three times more than 4G cell phones, China's 5G cell phone sales fell leading to RF chips quickly appeared more than six months of inventory. After April, the automotive industry began a significant decline, once the growth of the PC also began to decline, the chip supply surplus began to spread to the whole industry, the US chip is undoubtedly the first to bear the brunt of the US analog chips began to surplus, followed by several well-known US chip companies NVIDIA, AMD, Qualcomm and other news of cutting single, NVIDIA announced the second quarter results show a plunge. At this time, overseas chips have put their eyes on the world's largest chip purchasing country, China, 2021 China purchased 60% of the world's chips, in order to attract Chinese companies to buy more chips, U.S. chip companies take the initiative to reduce prices by 90%, speculative capital is also selling chips, Chinese companies have become a popular seat for various chip companies. In addition to the excess supply of chips, also lies in the self-improvement of Chinese chips, more than two years, China has broken the gap between storage chips, RF chips, IGBT chips, etc. Chinese chips not only reached the technical level of overseas chips, lower in price, a Chinese chip company said its chip prices are only a quarter of similar chips in the United States, which also seems to be the past practice, as long as China can produce overseas companies will quickly reduce the price of similar products. So we see this odd phenomenon, two years ago overseas chips or restrictions on the sale of chips to Chinese companies, or a significant increase in prices by tens of times before selling to Chinese companies, and now they began to lower their stature to significantly reduce the price of nearly 90% begging Chinese companies to buy, such a contrast is too strong.